And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of the first games that I got into uh, when I was getting into board gaming as a more serious hobby was Modern Art. Modern Art is a game about bidding on different famous pieces of art, although the pieces in this were basically made up. But it was an auction game. And for a long time, I said it was the best auction game that I had ever played. As time went on, as the years went by, I found myself playing it less and less. The auctions were okay, but one person could really mess it up for other people by bidding stupidly. I don't know, and it seems like over time I was getting less enamored of auctions in general. I mean, it, it almost seems like it's an overused mechanic. Well, cue the Griffin series of games. There are nine of them now, and today I'm talking about number nine in this series, and that's Master's Gallery. Master's Gallery is also published as Modern Art the Card Game, and that is very, very true. It's basically the same as Modern Art, but without the auctions. Does that make it a better game, or is it a simpler, watered-down version? Let's look at it, and then I'll tell you what I think. Master's Gallery is basically just a deck of cards with a few tokens included for good measure. And what players are trying to do is they're trying to have the most paintings of the artists which are the best. Now, in the first round, players are going to get 13 cards from this deck. And these cards are going to be showing a variety of the different painters that are in the game. And you can see here I have a whole pile of purple, some orange and yellow, and brown. Uh, you, uh, during the course of the game, you'll find yourself often referring to them by their color, as a, I guess saying... Uh, I have a Van Gogh and a Vermeer and some Monet's, you know, different, the artists, that's probably going to appeal to more people. And it also shows one of their paintings. Uh, many of the paintings are the same, uh, but some of the paintings are different, to, and that helps differentiate that that's a special card. On a player's turn, they simply play one of the cards in front of them. All they do is put a card in front of them. That's a painting that's yours. All right, so on your next turn, you put out another painting. On your next turn, you put out another painting, and so on and so forth. Now, some of the paintings have special abilities. For example, this one allows me to place one of these two tokens on any of the painters I want. So let's say I put it here on, uh, let's see, I'll put it here on Van Gogh. So now his paintings are worth two more. Some of the paintings, for example, this one here shows an equal sign, and that allows me to play two cards in front of myself when I place it down. This one here... Simultaneous, when that one's played, everyone puts a card face down and turns it over at the same time. This one here, which shows a box, lets you draw one card from the deck. This one here lets you play an extra card just like the equal sign does, but your second card can be face down. In case you forget what all these difficult symbols mean, and they're really not that difficult to remember, but there are cards that show you what each of the symbols mean. And basically, turns are done very, very quickly. And this continues for a while until there are six of one of the, the colors on the table between the players, period, of the face-up cards. At that point, the round is over, and we look and see which paintings have sold. So let's say, for example, here's the paintings that have been placed down. There's six purples, three oranges, two yellows, and a brown. That means purples were the most popular painting, and so I'm going to put a three token on the purples. The second most popular is orange, so they get a two token, and the third most popular is yellow, which gets a one token. If there's a tie, then it, you determine that in the order that they're placed here. In fact, you can see each of the painters, it tells you how many cards in the deck are for that painter. So there are fewer Vermeers than there are Van Goghs, of which there are 21. Now, once these points are on the card, each player then is going to score points equal to the cards that they have. So we have, in this instance, purple, yellow, and orange. And so I take a look at my hand here. I have two oranges, a purple, and a yellow. The, these are cards that I played in front of myself during this round. Oranges are worth two, so that's four. The purple's worth three, so that's seven. And the yellow's worth one, so I have eight points total. If I happen to have a brown card in my hand... You say, well, wait a minute, you put two points in that card. Yes, but only the three paintings which were the most popular are going to get any points. If brown had been one of those paintings, then it would have gotten more points. 
After everyone does this, finishes up tallying their points for the round. Players draw some more cards, and that depends on how many players are in the game. And another round begins, with all these numbers staying on the cards. And so the next round, we're going to put out another one, two, and three. And again, only those three paintings are going to score at all. But if those paintings have had additional points on them from before, those add up. So you can see that later rounds will get you many, many more points. You draw some more cards, start a third round. After the third round, you probably, unless there's only two players, will draw no more cards and you finish out so you get to the fourth round. You score, and one person is the winner, whoever has the highest score. It's a very, very simple game, and, and it lasts sometimes only 15 minutes. The big question here is, is it better than modern art? Well, here's my answer. In September 2009, I'm holding a gaming event in Seoul, South Korea. For all those of you who come to that event, one of you is going to get modern art because I'm getting rid of it at that point in time. I don't see any reason to own it than Master's Gallery. Now, let me be clear here. I'm not sure that I think Master's Gallery is a better game, but it's one that I enjoy more. I like the auctions in, in modern art, and I had a lot of fun with it when I played it, but those auctions could bog the game down. And to me, this gave me almost the exact same feeling in a much shorter period of time. Now, Master's Gallery, you have to be careful because it is easy for one color to go out quickly. Purple, 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 bam, round's over. And sometimes you feel like, oh, I can't believe people just played cards very quickly and they don't know what they're doing. But it seems like there's more control here and it has the same essence without the auctions. So why drag the game out? I, I, I really enjoy this one more. But if you like auctions and, you, and your favorite part of modern art was the auctions, and modern art is interesting because it has multiple different kinds of auctions, then this is going to displease you because you're going to miss those auctions. But for most people, I think, and the fact that this can be played very quickly in a filler, I think Master's Gallery is the wise choice. And this was a big surprise for me because when I heard that it had taken out the auctions, I thought, I don't know, but I like it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.